shall the constitution of the state be amended to permit the General Assembly to provide for early voting. Steve Harding said he would vote in favor of this. So did Ava Zimmerman. Um, I'm pretty sure Billy Buckley has said that he would vote in favor of this. I'm not sure how everyone else would vote in, fav- in, in this matter. I think Pat Callahan also said he would vote, who's going to vote in favor of this. I'm not sure on that one. I'm really not sure on that when it comes to Pat Callahan. I'm super, super, super undecided. I'm going to tell you how I voted. I voted no. And, you know, as a libertarian, to give you what the libertarian take is on this, I don't honestly know. I want to start off with this, though. Voting is not a right. Voting is a privilege. If it was a right, infants would be allowed to do it. If it was a right, Vladimir Putin, Putin would just so much to have to set foot on Connecticut soil, and you guys would be, have to be okay with him casting a vote, a vote. If Vladimir Putin comes onto U.S. soil, he has a right to a trial by jury. He has a right to avoid an unwarranted, both figuratively and literally, search and seizure. He has these rights, period, by virtue of so much as being on U.S. soil. These are not rights of citizenship. If they were rights of citizenship, they would be privileges. A privilege is something that somebody gives to you. It doesn't just come from the ether. It doesn't just come from the spirit. It's not something that's handed down from God. That would be a right. A right is something that pre-exists everything else. It pre-exists the law. In the case of a right, when you talk about the right to speak freely, that right exists no matter what. If you're going to control time, manner, and place, you're controlling time, manner, and place, not speech. And, of course, there's, you know, there's something to that. There's a principle behind all of that. There's a- these, these axioms that you live by. We're not going to get into that great into great detail. But if you're going to tell me voting is a right and not a privilege... Right. The, the clearest way that some, to tell if something is a privilege is to te- is is how, can you can it be taken away? Is there a, driving on on Connecticut roads? Is that a right or is that a privilege? Well, how would you have that taken away? Well, you take a driver's license away. You take the car away. Right. You get locked up in prison. You can't drive on Connecticut roads if you're serving a prison sentence. That's pretty clear, right? So that's a privilege that can be taken away. How do you stop somebody from speaking? Is it even possible? Like the idea of speech is the the idea of communication. It's the idea of language. The the ability to to communicate an idea, to transmit through with language what is in the mind to another into another mind. But the point is that one of the quickest ways you can tell if something is a privilege rather than the right is how do you take it away? And it's clear when it comes to things like voting that it can be taken away. It, it's obvious that you can lose your voting privileges if from no other for no other reason than let's say you renounce your citizenship, move to the UK, and become a UK citizen. Well, then how do you vote? How do you vote here in the US legally? If you commit high treason, right, and you get sentenced in terms of high treason to a life, to a life without the, 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 the possibility of parole. In the case of high treason, you're going to lose those voting privileges. They're not going to let you vote from prison. They're just not going to do it. And I don't think that there's too many people that are, would be in favor of that. I don't think there are too many people that would be in favor of, let's say, somebody who was a U.S. citizen and crashed a plane into a couple of towers and somehow managed to survive, killing 3,000 people in doing so. If we tried that person, subjected them to the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th Amendments, right, a due process of law, because you, are, you have a right to your day in trial. You have a right to your day in trial. You have a right to your day in court, excuse me. You have a right in that case to a tr- uh, trial by a jury of your peers. I don't know how you're going to get a jury of your peers in the case of somebody like Osama bin Laden, but let's say there was a U.S. citizen that did that. I don't think anyone would disagree with stripping them of their voting privileges if they were thus guilty of high treason or murder in that case. And, you know, the only reason they escaped the death sentence was because let's say they did it in New York or Connecticut where there is no death penalty and we've kind of abolished that uh, by law. The point is that voting is not a right. It is a privilege. And that privilege isn't, is, is a privilege for a reason. Right, We don't want infants voting. We don't want Vladimir Putin voting. 
We don't want people who have renounced their citizenship, moved out of country, and obtained legal citizenship in another country. We don't want them voting in, in the U.S. Right? Californians don't want Floridians coming to California and voting in California. We don't, we in Connecticut don't want New Yorkers copping a line from New York and voting here in Connecticut. If you live in New York, you vote in New York. If you live in Connecticut, you vote in Connecticut. One of the fastest ways I can lose the privilege to vote for Mayor Bass in next year's election would be for me to move to Brookfield. Then I instantly can't vote for Mayor Bass because I don't live in New Milford. And, there, and again, there's self-evident reason we would want that to be the case. There's, it's self-evident by the mere existence of borders that the people that govern within those borders govern with the consent of the people within those borders. How can you know that you have consent of the people when you're being elected by people who aren't even in that district? How can you know you have the consent of fellow nutmeggers in Connecticut if the people that, are, that, are just, that wind up deciding the election, let's say, at a one-vote election, are New Yorkers? Do you actually have consent in that case? Do you have representation when it comes time for taxation? So when it comes to that being the case, then you want to have extreme protections of that process. It means that if I say I'm Mike Sonello and I'm voting here in New Milford, you want to be damned sure I actually am Mike Sonello, that I haven't voted in multiple districts, that I haven't voted repeatedly, that I actually live in New Milford. One of the, like, I don't know how, I don't know how you get to a point where you're arguing against photo ID in that case. Perhaps then if you're going to have photo ID in order to vote, you have some sort of state-issued ID that doesn't cost the, the, the there's no point-of-sale price to that, right? That it's just absorbed into the cost of taxation. Okay, maybe, sure. But things like amending the Constitution to change that process effectively permanently Again, the Constitution is the thing that constitutes our government. It's the thing that allows our government to exist at any level. We have a town charter, which is essentially our Constitution. We have a state Constitution. We have a Constitution of the United States. These are the documents that tell government what they can and can't do. And, you know, living in the Constitution state... The reason you have that constitution is to say, as you're constituting your government, this is all we wanted to ever do. And if you don't like that, there are other states you can live in. And if you need to change it, then it better be need to change it because you're changing how the state is constituted. You're changing at an extremely fundamental and foundational level the entirety of the, found, of the spirit of the state the entirety of the constitution of the state. So you shouldn't be making any changes to this constitution unless they're absolutely mandatory, unless they're absolutely necessary. The 13th Amendment was a great amendment to the constitution because it abolished all forms of slavery. I don't think anyone disagrees with changing the constitution to explicitly forbid the ownership of the human being. It goes against the entirety of the spirit of this country and the entirety of the spirit of consent of the governed. You can't possibly be governed if there aren't consent in all transactions, if there isn't mutual consent. Slavery is diametrically in opposite, exists in, a diametrically in opposition to the spirit of consent, to the idea of consent. You can't have slavery and consent at the same time. It's not possible. You can't have the Declaration of Independence and slavery and remain consistent. You can't do it. So I think we all agree that the 13th Amendment was a good amendment and was necessary. We might agree with the 20, I think it was 5th Amendment, that said that, essentially, you're not allowed to have, was it the 20, 25th? Somewhere between 22 and 25 was the one that put a term limit on the presidents. I'm not so sure I necessarily agree with it, but these are th things that, like, the reason that the amendment process to the Constitution is so arduous at the United States, at the federal level, 
is because this is the Constitution. This is the thing that is defining the spirit of the entirety. Of, this is the brain, the heart, the lungs. This is all of the organs, right? And the government, that the people that embody the government, the people that form the government, are really nothing more than the skin around the outside. Right? Like, the Constitution is something you don't want to just take for granted, and you don't want to change unless you absolutely have to. Early voting, to me, is something that if you're going to do it, you better damn well be in, in person. Now, people are going to say there's not really much of a difference between going into the clerk, town clerk's office, showing ID, you know, filling out your ballot there in the town clerk's office and submitting it to the town clerk in person versus doing the same exact thing over at Chernobyl Intermediate School like, like I did today. I totally get that. I totally get that. But does it have to be done? I haven't heard the argument where this is something that has to be done. Especially in a, in a state like Connecticut where you can get a, a, a mail-in ballot for just about any reason and just about to right before the day of the election. If you know you're going to be way out of town in advance and can't possibly make it, then get a, get a, get a, a, get a, a mail-in ballot. The state makes it incredibly easy to mail in your vote. So why is it absolutely necessary to... Ch like, if this is an ordinance, if this was a change to the... to the, If this was a legislative change, if this was just a change to law in Connecticut, I might be okay with it. I might say, all right, fine. Because we can easily... If this blows up in our face, we can easily elect people who can just change that law. That's not the case with the Constitution. You shouldn't be constantly changing that thing that is supposed to be the bedrock. It's supposed to be that that unmovable mover that doesn't that just is this is these are the axiomatic principles we adhere to. So I would be extremely leery of of amending the constitution period. And when it comes to this case I'd be leery of it in practice as well because why do we do we, do we absolutely need it? I kind of don't. We kind of don't. And then the second half of this is, well, what, what does that speak to? What does that speak to? It speaks to an, an, ex, an expansion of the privileges surrounding voting. It expands those privileges. Do we really want to be doing that broadly? Are we going to treat voting as a right or are we treating it as a privilege? Because the arguments I'm hearing from, let's say, Democrats and from the left in general is that the reason you want to have early voting is because voting is a right. Which means that you're using the, the amendments of the Constitution to get the early voting to expand into the, into the spirit, into the ethos, into, this, into the atmosphere of voting being a right. Which means I have no reason to believe that this is being done, number one, in good faith, and number two with a limiting principle behind it because it seems the principle behind it is the exact opposite of a limiting principle. At what point do we get to, you know, lowering the voting age? At what point do we get to mail-in ballots where you never have to go in person to anything? At what point do we go and get to voting via Twitter? I know that people are going to say, oh, Mike, we're not doing that now. No, we're not doing that now. But why are we doing what we're doing now? And again, if you're going to tell me we're doing it because we have to, fine. Fine. Then we don't have this conversation about why it is that we're doing this change in the first place. We don't have this conversation about what is the spirit behind the thing. We just don't have that conversation. So this is why I voted no. Because I wasn't convinced to vote yes. In this case... Should the amendment be should be the should the constitution be amended? If the answer is yes, what we have is a positive claim, which means that you presume, you presuppose the negative claim, and then the burden of proof lies in the positive claim. Convince me to amend the constitution. Not only convince me because it's an amendment to the constitution, blow me away. And so far, I haven't been blown away. I was going to just simply abstain because I didn't know how to vote. But in this case, I think if you don't know how to vote, the correct answer is to vote against. Am I going to be completely torn apart if, 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 if this thing goes through? No, not really. 
honestly, it's something I'd split a hair over. But I think the hair that I'm splitting is backed by reason, backed by principle. Love to hear your thoughts. How did you guys vote when it came to the ballot question?